back on Mother Earth after 340 days in space, Dan. As remarkable as this is, an astronaut pulled into the cold Kazakhstan air after nearly a year in space. Imagine landing this way on Mars without the crew. Yes, I could do that. You know, Mars has has less gravity, which is which is helpful. It's not just the landing or the mechanics of this mission that could help with trips to the Red Planet. Kelly's own body was a living, breathing experiment, tested and measured to gauge the impact of long-term spaceflight on a human being. Kelly says there's a difference between this and his three previous space journeys. My level of like muscle soreness and fatigue is, is a lot higher than it was last time. I also have an issue with my you know, my skin that because it hadn't touched anything for so long, like any significant contact is very, very sensitive to, uh, it's almost like a burning feeling. This experiment has a unique control. Kelly's identical twin brother, Mark, a retired astronaut, is taking all the same tests. Some differences are immediate. Scott grew close to four centimeters taller while he was in space. That's what weightlessness does to the spine but it doesn't last. Long-term effects of space travel, including radiation exposure, will also be tested. Now we're in the phase of, of collecting the data and starting to analyze the data and uh, seeing what we really learned from this mission. Another goal of the journey, building hype. Kelly was active on social media, posting pictures and videos to more than a million followers. Joining us now from the International Space Station, please welcome astronaut Scott Kelly, everybody. <laughs> and he talked up the space program on late night TV. Well, good to be on your show. I uh, really appreciate it. Outreach is key. Any mission to Mars will need public support and cash, likely around $100 billion. So in addition to being a scientific guinea pig, Scott Kelly is now a pitchman for America's future in space. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Washington.